don't realize that God is the Bible. They, they, their problem is they've been taught this damn devil right here. Right, right. They've, been, they've been taught butter, bubble gum and, and, and butterscotch. That's what they've been taught. They've been taught yellow makes me sad. They've been taught hugs, bubble gum, kisses on the cheek, rosy cheeks. That's what they've been taught. They've been taught this devil. That's why they act like that. Go ahead. They don't realize the God of the Bible they're dealing with. Go ahead. The book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 8. Uh -huh. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable. What is it? Revelation 21, verse 8. 21 and 8. I said 20 and 8. All right. But the fearful and unbelieving. So the fearful, because I was, the Bible was trying to get you to take off your hat while the scripture was coming out. And we read about the, we read about the, we read about how uh, God is going to destroy the earth in the two thirds. Okay. Now the fearful, because I have mentioned something about. Uh, your, I said your problem was that you didn't fear God. Okay, but the fearful and unbelieving. And the unbelieving, to believe, means that you will keep the commandments of God. When you read in Sirach chapter 24, verse 32, I believe, it means to believe is to keep the commandments. Go ahead. And the abominable. So the fearful, the abominable, and murderers. And murderers. Excuse me. And murderers fall into what we read earlier in that Leviticus 19, verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. If I just look upon my brother, I got hatred for my brother and my sister, selling drugs to him, all these things, I hate them. So hatred is a form of murder, okay? And, the, and murderers. And whoremongers. And whoremongers, like we read in Hebrews 13 and 4, God will judge. And whoremongers. And sorcerers. And sorcerers, when you into witchcraft, you into zodiac signs, you went to uh, uh, Voodoo and Santa, the, Santa, Santa, Maria. Santa Maria. When you went to all of these uh, witchcraft, okay? Uh, I just watched that. Uh, I, I just watched that movie. Um, Talk to me. That was some damn witchcraft right there. I don't know if y'all ever seen that, but it was some damn. That was some witchcraft, okay? It was you, zodiac signs and and astro astrology. All of that is witchcraft and sorcerers and idolaters and idolaters have a uh, believing in white Christ, having the cross around your neck. What's that on your, on your, on your chain? That's a lion? Okay. And idolaters. Uh, idol idolatry can go into anything. You can, or, or, uh, uh, you can worship the woman more than you uh, but fear God. Right. You can worship money more than you fear God. Right. And all, uh, you can worship yourself more than you fear God. Right. You can worship them dates more than you fear God. Right. That ultimately becomes your God. That's a form of idolatry. Okay? So, the abominable, whoremongers, murderers, uh, uh, the fearful will have, uh, the unbelieving will have their part in, oh, go ahead, I'm not getting ahead of the scripture. And all liars. And all liars. Even liars. Even when you are li when you in the midst of lying, okay, they will what? Shall have their part. In the lake with the with burning with fire. So that's what I was saying earlier. He's not just going to kill you, kill you physically. That's talking about your spirit. That's talking about your soul. When you get woken back up to be judged, give me, give me, jump down to verse, uh, jump down to verse twelve. Um, so, so, so read that in part. No, uh, twenty-one. No, twenty in verse twelve. Twenty in verse, twenty in verse twelve. But hold on, read the end of that again shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire. Just read the whole thing. Read the whole thing. Verse 8. Uh -huh. But the fearful and unbelieving uh -huh. and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers uh -huh. and sorcerers uh -huh. and idolaters uh -huh. and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. With fire and brimstone. Remember it said, we didn't even finish it, but he said he was coming back with fire like a whirlwind. Okay, they will have their part in that. And it's not just talking about the physical, it's talking about your soul. All these brothers and sisters that refuse to hearken unto the word of God, their soul is going to be destroyed. Right. You're, going to, you're going to have your part in the lake of fire. Okay, watch this. Give me, uh, give me, give me another one now. Look at Revelation chapter 20, verse 12. Uh -huh. And I saw the dead, small and great. So he said they small, saw the dead, 
small and great. Go ahead. Stand before God. So let me see what the dead is. Let me show you what, what, what the dead means. Hold that. Give me Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 16. Let me show you what the dead is. Oh, because we 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 not we all alive right now, right? But I can say if you're not keeping the commandments of God, you dead. That's right. Because the commandments make you alive. We're gonna prove that too. Proverbs chapter seven verse two. The book of Proverbs chapter seven verse two. Uh -huh. Keep my commandments and live. What makes you alive? Keep my commandments and live. So when you when you keeping God's commandments, remember what God told Adam in Genesis. Verses 2, verse 7. He said, I'm going to breathe the breath of life into you. You know what that was that he breathed, breathed into him? He breathed the commandments. He breathed the commandments into Adam. That's why when we read about love, uh, in First John chapter 5, verse 3, it said, these are the commandments which you have learned from the beginning. So Adam had the commandments in the beginning, and that made him alive. Now let's find out what it means to be dead. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 16. Book of Proverbs, chapter 21, verse 16. Uh -huh. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding. So the man that falls out of the way of the understanding of this Bible, go ahead, shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So you shall remain if you don't take heed to this Bible. That's why a lot we used to we used to say that that you ever see that show, The Walking Dead, Rick Grimes and all of that. We used to say, I haven't heard nobody say it in a minute. But we used to say that our people, Blacks, Hispanics, and Indians, they are that walking dead. That movie or that show was talking about us. Right. We were them zombies just walking around dead, walking around groping at noonday, looking for Baptists, looking for religion, looking for Muslim, uh, uh, looking for women, looking for this next high, looking for this next bottle, looking for this next pill, looking for this next these next panties, looking for this next good time. Okay? We're looking for everything except for God. Right. And God, remember... God said he's going to turn his back on us until, until we acknowledge our offense. People say they want the kingdom, but they can't even clean up their communities. Our community, the other nations be laughing at us. They be like, look at these, look, look, look at these people. Look at these people, they be laughing at us. They walk by shaking their hand, laughing at us. Go ahead. The man that wandered out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So we read, in order to be alive, that means you're keeping the commandments of God. When you're dead, that means you, 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 you don't have no fear of God and you're not keeping the commandments. Yes. Now go back to Revelations. Look at Revelations, chapter 20, verse 12. Uh -huh. And I saw the dead, small and great. So we're looking around. We see the dead, small and great. That's why the, the, the Most High had to sit. Give me... Give me... Hold, hold that. Give me Obadiah chapter 1. Give me 1, and I think it's like the last verse, and then get Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 17. That's why the Most High God, had, he had to send a remnant of his people. He had to send the prophets back on earth in order to guide the people. The same way uh, John the Baptist came and he, he led the way for Christ. He led the path for Christ, and then Christ came, and he became that example for the people. It's the same, what we were talking about earlier, about Noah. Noah was out here trying to teach the people, but the people wasn't listening. We're doing the same thing. We're trying to be that guide and that example to the people that the Most High sent back. He sent our spirits back. He sent your spirit back. It ain't no, it's not no purpose, no, um, it's, not, it's not no reason, no reason at all that you're standing amongst us for like the third time now. It, the, the Most High dealing with your spirit. And then all praise to the Most High. This time you actually have adhered to the commandments right. by taking off your hat. All praises. That's, right. That's, That's it. it. To us, that might be a light thing. But into Christ, he like, ooh, I might be able to put wisdom in this brother. Right. I might be able to deal with this brother. Right. I, might have, I might be able to put life into this brother. Right. And then in order of putting life into you, you put life into your community. That's right. It doesn't leave what we've been talking about. The point does not leave. We're still talking about change. Right. But remember what the other brother said with the jean, jean, jean outfit on? He said he had to make, you have to make change within what first? What did he say? Yourself. Yourself. You have to make change within yourself first. And then you can put change in your wife. You can put change in your kids. You can put change in your community. And putting change in your community 
you bring forth the kingdom. That's, right. That's why even in the Lord's prayer it says, how the Lord's prayer go? Um, in, our, in earth, in earth, thy will be done in earth. We're not going to some pie in the sky. We're not going to be walking up there in the clouds with white angels and white baby angels with wings. No. The, the playing the piano. Tupac playing the piano talking about all thugs go to heaven while he got a blunt in his air and a blunt in his mouth. That ain't happening. That is not happening. It said the kingdom is going to be, God's will, the kingdom is going to be right here on earth. So again, you make your change within yourself. You, you put that on your wife. You put that on your kids. You push that out into the community. Right. And then what? Give me, hold that. I know I got you. Give me Luke chapter 17. Is it 17, 21 or 20? Sorry, 20. At the book of Luke chapter 17, verse 20. Uh -huh. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, uh -huh. when the kingdom of God should come. So when, when should the kingdom of God come? Read. He answered them and said, uh -huh. the kingdom of God come is not. With observation. So the kingdom of the kingdom of God is just not going to come. It's just not going to fall on your lap. You got to put in work. You got to put in much work. The hardest thing you're going to have to do is to change your mindset and conform it to the word of God. That's going to be the hardest thing you have to do. You may have used to be a whoremonger. You may used to maybe used to be a drug addict, an alcoholic. That's going to be the hardest thing that you're going to have to do first is to change your mindset first. And then you can change it on your wife. Then you can change your children's mindset. Right. Then you can change your communities. Right. And then the kingdom comes. Right. The kingdom don't come without observation. It ain't just going to fall on you. You ain't going to no pie in the, spot with, in the sky with white angels and white babies with wings. That's not happening. That's a fairy tale. That's what the that's what your your, your that's what your oppressor pushed on you. Right. That's what the Christian church church pushed on you. Right. Baptism, Seventh Day Adventist, right. uh, Pentecostal. Right. That's what man-made religion pushed on us. That's, right. that's not biblical. Read that part again. The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Uh -huh. Neither shall they say, No here or no there. Uh -huh. For behold, the kingdom of God. Is within you. That's the part I wanted right there. The kingdom of God is with you, Zaire. It's within you. Right. In order to push the kingdom of God out in the communities, you first got to change yourself. That's right. You first got to change yourself. Yes, I know I used to be a whoremonger. Yes, I know I didn't raise up my kids like I'm supposed to. Yes, I know I was a drug dealer. Yes, I know uh, I used to drink alcohol and get drunk. I know I used to do these things, but now I've changed. Yes. Now I changed my mind. Give me that in uh, give me that in Acts chapter three and verse nineteen. Bring it out. Our people don't want to take no accountability. They hate it. That's why other nations laugh at us. That's why they at the top and we at the bottom because they don't want to change themselves. Right. That's why I read they love oppression. Go ahead, read that. The book of Acts chapter three verse nineteen. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins. May be blotted out. So the Bible says, repent, ye there, ye there, uh, repent, so that your sins may be blotted out. The kingdom of heaven is within you, but you got to change yourself first. And once you repent, uh, all, uh, you become a new creature in Christ. You become a new creature. All things are passed away. So that's why people, um, uh, People uh, will put out these videos, right? And people will say in the comments, oh, look, he talking to people. He being a hypocrite. He, he, he being a hypocrite, this, that, and this. And they'll say I'm being a hypocrite because I got tattoos on my arm. You're right. I do have tattoos on my arm. I do have tattoos. At one point, I didn't know about Leviticus 21 and verse 5, where it says you should not make any cutting in your flesh. But now that I know Zaire, what do you think I do now? I stopped getting tattoos. It's that simple. That's right. It is that simple. I stopped getting tattoos. So now, when people say, oh, you can't judge me, when they try to read in Matthew chapter 7, verse 1, they try to say, don't, ju don't judge ye not unless ye be judged. But they don't read down where it says, first get the moat out of your eye, which means first change your ways, and then you can go out and you can change 
the people. You can prevent change in them. Give me Obadiah first. Look at Obadiah, chapter verse 21. And Savior shall come up on Mount Zion. So the point I was making earlier is that the Most High had to send his prophets back on the earth in order to make change, in order to make change to our people. Look, I'm going to give you a tip. Give me, give me, hold that. Give me, uh, give me Lamentations chapter 4, verse 17. Because we've been teaching, we've been talking to this brother as well all night. We've been talking to him all night. Get off the drugs. Get off. Stop. Uh, uh, stop drinking. We've been giving him the word of God, but then the other nations have come to him, and he they, they, he deal with other nations. But instead of looking at your own people that look just like you, that want to see change in their community, that's why as young men we gotta rise up. Right. We gotta stand up for God. Read that. Right. We got lamentations. Chapter 4, verse 17. Uh -huh. As for us, our eyes has yet failed for our vain help. So our eyes have failed for our vain help. Read. In our watching. And our watching. Go ahead. We have watched for a nation that cannot save us. Our people always want to look out. This brother, look. I don't even know who called the cops on him, but he wasn't bothering nobody. And all of a sudden, other nations come around. They do whatever they do. And then now we got cops all around him. He was listening to the word of God. He was actually react, uh, 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 com conversing with us. But our people always look for the other nations to help them. That's why they'll look for, uh, that's why they'll, the, the, remember we read in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4, which says marriage is ongoing all, but our people is not getting married. They're kicking the man out the house, and then they'll go to the other nations for welfare, They'll go to the other nations for uh, uh, food stamps. They'll go to the nations for, for help. Meanwhile, the other nations ain't never been out here to help you. They ain't push nothing but destruction on us. They ain't do nothing but push sin on us. That's why I said earlier, the Negro was made right here in America. Right here in the land. Right here in the land. And the white man, the so-called white man, he was the damn conductor of it. Okay? He said, come as you are in the churches. He said, worship Christmas. He said, worship white man Jesus. He said, worship Thanksgiving. He said, uh, hate one another. And do and, and, and he put the drugs in our communities. He put the alcohol in our in our communities. He put the uh the guns in our communities. But our people stay running to the other nations. They want to marry the other nations. They see no good in their own people. But, but I can see why they would feel like, because then you got, you got people that are supposed to be our leaders, like this old young man right here, supposed to be our leaders, but because there's no life in him, now you see, you see what happens. Now he's got to go spend the night in jail for nothing. He's got to spend the night in jail for nothing. You know what I mean? It makes no sense. That's why we need leaders. Go back, uh, what's that? Go, oh, get you read that over time. Over time, verse 21. Uh -huh. And Savior shall come up on Mount Zion uh -huh. to judge the mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord. So it said what? It says saviors. Give me Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 17. It said saviors shall come up to judge Mount Zion. Mount Zion is Jerusalem. Mount Zion is us. So saviors, we are those saviors. With the word of God, we are those saviors. What's going to save you? What's going to stop the woman from committing abortions? Marriage is honorable and all. What's going to stop the murders? What's going to stop the killings? What's going to stop the hatred? What's going to stop the drug dealer? Okay? Uh, Leviticus 19 verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. What's going to stop the single parent households? Saviors should come up to judge you black, Hispanics, and Native Indians. What's going to stop the man from a uh, whoremongering against our women? For our women to put on modest apparel. He want to listen to the sermon over there. Yes, he should be. Let him listen. He just can't stand up. Hey, hey you, there's no reason to talk like that. This, you're supposed to be an example to this young man. You're supposed to be an example to us. Why? You think that's being an example? Remember, I asked you earlier. I said, do you see problems in your community? What'd you tell me? You told me yes. So do you think this is an example to fix that? 
Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Bay eggs, bacon, ham. It don't matter. Do you answer my I don't question? Like to be. Ask to answer my question. I don't Do you like think the way be. that you're acting is going to provoke change in our community? Assalamu alaikum, million man. This is why we need prophets. This is why we read that Ezekiel. Book of Ezekiel, chapter three, verse seventeen. Uh -huh. Son of man, uh -huh. I have made thee a watchman. You black Hispanic uh -huh. Native Indians. God said he made us watchmen. Don't what does a watchman do? A watchman is out here to protect. A watchman is supposed to be vigilant. So when I see my people Don't in sin, when I see them on drugs, when I see them uh, uh, on alcohol, it's our job to go out there and let them know not to be like that. So when they can, when they if they was to arrest him, they would be justified because he out here conducting himself like this. God did. Get, hold that. Hold that. Give me Jeremiah chapter 2 verse uh, 20. Bring it out. Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 20. God didn't make us to be young, young man. Pull your pants up. Women out here, dog. God didn't make us to be like that. God made us a noble vine. That's right. So how did you become that degenerate plant? How did we become that degenerate plant? We're talking about change. We got no real leaders. That's why our women will walk out here and all with their ass hanging out. They'll walk around with their breasts hanging out. Our men uh, uh, conduct themselves like this because they don't know how to move. Go ahead, read that. Book of Jeremiah, chapter 2, verse 21. Huh? Yet I have planted thee a noble vine. Young man, take it up with God. Your shirt, young man, young man, young man, your shirt says take it up with God. God said he made you a noble vine. He said he made you a noble vine. Go ahead. Holy. A right seed. He said he made you holy. A right seed. But what? How then art thou turned into the degenerate plant? So how have you become that degenerate plant? How have you become that degenerate plant? Because we have no real leaders in the black community. What happened to the Malcolm X's, the Fred Hamptons, the Martin Luther Kings, Sojourner Truth? What happened to the leaders in our communities? What happened to the men that raised our righteous sisters that was going to bring up our kids, not to a twerking on TikTok in front of them? What happened to that? What happened to the men that's not on drugs? What happened to the men that's not uh, abusing themselves in alcohol? Go ahead. Yet, I have planted thee a noble bond, holding a right seed. How then art thou turned into the degenerate plant. How have you become that degenerate plant? Give me Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 2. How have you become that degenerate plant, black man? This is why the other nations laugh at us. This is why they laugh at us. This is why they'll have their foot on your neck and not even care. This is why they'll shoot you with your hands up. Because we conduct ourselves like animals and savages. That's what Isaiah 59 and verse 2. Why would they murder? Why do they kill us the way they do? Because they don't they don't see any real men in us. Because the way you act right now, that's why. That's why they don't care about us. Go ahead, read that. What has Allah done for you? Allah ain't do nothing. You out here on your knees with your with your with your butt crack hanging out. What has Allah done for you? He ain't done nothing for you. Go ahead and read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 59, verse 2. But your iniquities, but what? But your iniquities. But your sins, young man. Your sins. You said take it up with God. Well, if God got to take it up with you, you know what he's going to do? He's going to kill you. The wages of sin is death. If you don't change your mind, he is going to kill you. Go ahead. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. That's why we can go out here and conduct ourselves. That's why you got the women looking at our men. Like, what's wrong with this nigga? That's how they are. What's wrong with this nigga? That's crazy that we even got to talk like that. He, he can't be a righteous example. Not in that mind state. He can't be a righteous example. Go ahead and read that again. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Your sins. Your sins have separated you from God. Go ahead. And your sins have hid his face from you. Go ahead. And your, your sins may God hide his face from you. That's why we're in the conditions that we are in. Because our people don't want to take adhere to the word of God. They'd rather be disobedient.
to the word of God. Right. Like that's going to profit him something. Right. You got young, young women walking out here, young men walking out here. And he's supposed to be an example. That's not an example. Go back to Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 2. Jeremiah 14, and verse 2. We read it earlier. What happened to our leaders? What happened to our leaders? The leaders that we once had. Go ahead. Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Chapter 14, verse 2. Uh -huh. Judah born it. At the gate that wrote language. Uh -huh. They are black. I'm sorry, read again. Judah born it. Uh -huh. At the gate that wrote language. The gates are supposed to be our leaders. The Bible says our leaders are lacking. The gates is our leaders. It says they are lacking. This young man is supposed to be a leader. Right. Hold, give me, hold that. Give me Job chapter 32 and verse 7. Job chapter 32 and verse 7. He's supposed to be, he's supposed to be guiding you. He's supposed to be guiding me. Except in his condition, the only way he guided us, he about to guide his way right to the jail cell. Right to the county house. I don't like division. Division? You, you separating yourself from God right now. Right. How about that division? You're talking about take it up with God. Your shirt says take it up with God. Go ahead and read that. Here we go, Job. Chapter 32, verse 7. Uh -huh. I said, they should speak. The Bible says older men should speak. Remember, uh, uh, remember, um, um, like I mentioned, even Fred Hampton. Fred, you know how old Fred Hampton was when they assassinated him? Do you know how Fred Hampton was? Do y'all know who Fred Hampton is? Young man, young man. Do you know who Fred Hampton is? How old was he when they murdered him? 21 years old. That young man fought for he fought. That young man fought for change in his community. He, Fred Hampton said in one of his speeches, if you're not a revolutionary, don't even think about him. You think this is revolutionary right here? The other nations is like, look, he bring he bringing on uh, inter he entertainment for people. He entertainment for people. Go ahead. I said, they should speak and most do of years to teach wisdom. So the multitude of years, he you would say he's a multitude of years, right? A multitude of years should teach wisdom. He should be out here teaching wisdom. Go ahead. But there is a spirit in man. And the inspiration of the Almighty uh -huh. gives them understanding. Go ahead. Great men are not always wise. So he should be teaching wisdom. But the Bible says great men, meaning older men, are not always wise. These brothers right here are trying to talk him into not getting himself locked up. He, do you think that's a wise mindset? He's not being wise right now. He actually being stupid. Matter of fact, hold that. Give me Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 20. Or is it 20? We got Proverbs chapter 1 verse 22. How long, ye simple ones, we love simplicity. The Bible, remember, it said that uh, our leadership is lacking. Okay? And when we got leadership lacking, you know what I mean? Our communities turn out like this. But God, remember we read earlier, God said he's pouring life into you, Zaire. He's pouring life into the ones that's willing to, uh, he, he, he's pouring life into you by keeping the commandments, right? Go ahead, read that again. How long, ye simple ones? But the Bible says, how long will you be simple, black man? How long will you have that simple mindset that you will conduct yourself rolling on the floor, getting dirty, his bugs all over this floor. And then you got your cheeks out, you got your crack out, you, you pissing on yourself. You laying in piss, pit, all of that. How long? Read it again. How long? Ye simple ones. For ye love simplicity. The most high God is saying, how long, black man, will you continue to be stupid? That's what he's saying. How long will you continue to be stupid? How long, you simple ones? Read on. And the scorners delight in their scorning. And scorners love to delight in their scorning. Assalamu alaikum. They love to delight in their scorning. But they don't, but watch this, but watch this. And fools hate knowledge. What did the Bible call them? And fools hate knowledge. We've been out here for almost two hours giving knowledge, getting knowledge. But fools, the Bible called them a fool. Fools hate knowledge. He called them simple and he said fools hate knowledge. But God gonna say more. 
Hey, people don't realize that God is a Bible. Their, their, their problem is they've been taught this damn devil right here. Right, right. They've, been, they've been taught butter, bubble gum and, and, and butterscotch. That's what they've been taught. They've been taught yellow makes me sad. They've been taught hugs, bubble gum, kisses on the cheek, rosy cheeks. That's what they've been taught. They've been taught this devil. That's why they act like that. Go ahead. They don't realize the God of the Bible they're dealing with. Go ahead. Read that. Turn you at my reproof. The God of the Bible said turn you at his correction. Get off the drugs. Get off the alcohol. He said turn your mind towards the Bible at his reproof. Meaning at his correction. Read on. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. But now he's pouring his spirit upon you, Zaire. I will make known my words unto you. He will make known his words. That's what we try to prevent this young man from going to jail. Now he got to go to the county because he's being stupid. Because he's being foolish. Read on. Because I have called and he refused. You hear what he did with the Bible says? You see him judgment right before your eyes. You see him judgment right before your eyes. The whole thing we've been talking about. Read that part again. Because I have called and he refused. He sat over here for a whole hour and a half. Get in the word of God. He, God said, because you refused, go ahead. I have stretched out my hand. He stretched out his hand to you. He said, this is the way. Walk ye in it. Go ahead. And no man regarded. And then you didn't regard. You, 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 you showed yourself to be simple. You showed yourself uh, to be a fool. Read on. But ye have said at naught all my counsels. God said, you said at naught at all his counsel. Now you see in judgment. Now he got to go and spend the night in jail for no reason. That didn't have to happen. But because he wanted to be a foolish man, now he's going to jail for a night. Go ahead. And with none of my rebuke, I also will laugh at your calamity. Hold on. Hold on. Did you hear what the God of the Bible said? Now God said he's going he's gonna to do what at your judgment? What is God going to do? Again, y'all have not learned the God of this Bible. Y'all have learned this white man deluded version of the Bible. Right. You have learned white angels. You have learned white Moses. You have learned white Christ. Right. That has never provoked any change in your communities. Right. But listen to what the God of the Bible said he would do. Because remember, we talked about the God of the Bible that flooded the whole earth. Then we talked about the God of the Bible said what he's going to do in the future. Fire coming to this planet. Fire is coming to America. Fire is coming to all of you two-thirds that want to stand outside of the word of God. Fire is coming to you drug dealers. Fire is coming to you thugs. Fire is coming to you women that want to dress out of, uh, 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 dress not modestly. Fire is coming to you alcoholics. Fire is coming to you whoremongers. Fire is coming to you women and you men that don't want to get married, but you want to continue to have sex. Okay? Fire, judgment is coming. Go ahead. I also will laugh at your calamity. This is God speaking. He said, I am going to laugh at your calamity. I'm going to laugh when you get judged and you go to jail down for the night. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. 